الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the peace and blessings of Allah upon his final messenger Muhammad and upon his companions and his family to proceed. Inshallah ta'ala the title of the talk is Al-Qaeda and the Khawarij two names one ideology. And this talk Basically, it is taken from a well-known story which is present in the book Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, a book that deals with the Islamic history from the beginning to the end by Al-Imam Al-Hafiz Ibn Kathir. And we will basically read this story and highlight some comparisons between the Khawarij, a deviant sect, who appeared in Islam and those who are present in our time upon the same methodology. And before we start, it's befitting that we reply to a doubt that has been spread in the various communities by the misguided group known as Hizb al-Tahrir. When they have stated that there is no such thing in Islam as an extremist, Again, this shows the ignorance of this group and their lack of understanding of the texts of the book and the sunnah. Because whether they fail to recognize or maybe it's due to them actual, actually being ignorant, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about extremism. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Upon the authority of the disciple, the companion, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah said, Halaka al qalaha thalathan. The Prophet said, Those who go to extremes are to be destroyed. Those who go to extremes are to be destroyed. Those who go to extremes are to be destroyed. And Imam al Nawi, a famous scholar of Al Islam, explained this to mean. المتعمقون المغالون المجاوزون الحدود في أقوالهم وأفعالهم that this is referring to those people who go too deep and beyond bounds and extremes in their sayings and in their actions and the khawarij and the al-qaida and his tahrir are from those extremists and another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Iyakum wal ghulu fi din, beware of extremism in the religion. Fa inna ma ahlak man kana qablakum al ghulu fi din, because verily that which destroyed those who came before you was extremism in the religion. So, returning to the story." And the story relates to the killing of Ali ibn Abi Talib who was the fourth Khalifa following the prophetic guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the belief of the people of the Sunnah is that he was the fourth best companion from the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And these people You will see How they plotted and planned To kill Ali Ibn Abi Talib Whose status We have just mentioned So if this deviant sect This extremist sect They can kill Ali Ibn Abi Talib a relative of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then they can kill anyone else. Especially a non-Muslim. They will find it easy and simple. Why? Because they do not value life. So the story is mentioned by Ibn Kathir in volume 7, 
starting upon page 327 in his book Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. And he said, it is mentioned that three individuals from the Khawarij, and their names were Abdurrahman ibn Amrin, who was known as Ibn Muljam. And pay attention to this name, because you will hear about this individual, that which will surprise you and amaze you. Abdurrahman ibn Amrin, who was well known as Ibn Muljam. And likewise, Al-Burak ibn Abdullah al-Tamimi, and Amrun ibn Bakr al-Tamimi. So these three individuals who are from the head of this deviant sect known as the Khawarij, whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about them, they will not cease to appear. Meaning they will continuously appear until you find the latter part of them fighting with the Dajjal. They gathered together, these three, and they pondered and spoke about the killing of their brothers, the people of Nahrawan. And they sought the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these individuals who were killed. And the battle of Nahrawan is the battle where Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Muslim armies killed the Khawarij and defeated them. So these individuals, these three people, Ibn Muljam, Al-Burq ibn Abdullah, and Amr, Amr ibn Bakr, they gathered, discussing the affairs, like the people do today, where ten years ago, when I was in university in London in Kings, you found them coming to the university showing you videos about Chechnya, showing you videos about various wars that are taking place in the world, spreading their propaganda to try and incite the Muslims and arouse their jealousness and their compassion and their feelings for the other Muslims in the world. So likewise you found Ibn Muljam, they sat speaking about how their brothers from the Khawarij were slaughtered by Ali and killed, sending blessings upon them. And then this propaganda, it is used to promote a certain ideology or a certain cause. Whereas back in the beginning of the 90s, or the mid-90s, you found that they were trying to send people away to go and fight. Now they try and use this propaganda to entice innocent, ignorant Muslims to go and kill themselves and commit suicide. And barbarically and horrifically kill innocent people. So, the Khawarij they met and they said, مَا نَصْنَعُوا بِالْبَقَاءَ بَعْدَهُمْ What shall we do? What are we meant to do after the death of our brothers? Those who used to call the people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they never used to fear the blame of the blamers. Then the suggestion came. They said, فَلَوْ شَرَيْنَا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَأَتَيْنَا إِمَّةَ الضَّلَالَ فَقَتَلْنَاهُمْ فَأَرَحْنَا مِنْهُمَ الْبِلَادِ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمَ الثَّأَرِ They said, if we were to give up our lives and approach the imams of misguidance and try and murder them, then we would free the lands and we would have obtained revenge for our brothers. Look at this. Who are they referring to here? The imams of misguidance, they're referring to Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, from the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom the Prophet said about the companions, khayr al-nas qarni, the best people are my generation. 
And the Khawarij referred to them as what? Imams of misguidance. So you see again, here you had the Khawarij secretly gathering, plotting and planning, no different to today. Where the Khawarij, they gather and they plot and they plan. So then this individual, Ibn Muljam, he said, Ana ukfikum, me I will take care for you. I will take care of Ali ibn Abi Talib, meaning I will kill him. And Al Burak ibn Abdullah said, Me I will kill Ma'awi ibn Abi Sufyan. And Amrun, he said, I will kill Ibn al As. Again, arranging to assassinate and kill innocent people and shed the blood here of the companions. And this is a nukta, a point that we really need to focus upon. If this extreme and deviant sect can kill the companions of the Messenger of Allah, who the Muslims hold to be the best of the people after the prophets and messengers, then it's easy for them to kill anyone else. Simple. They don't have to think twice. So then, these three individuals, they took pledges from one another, and they agreed that they will not leave their target until either they kill him or they die trying. So they took their swords and poisoned their swords and they proceeded. Again, the Khawarij, they used to make cells, meaning they used to enter cities and hide their plans and their affairs from the people. Ibn Muljam as Ibn Kathir mentions, he said, as for Ibn Muljam, and Ibn Muljam will be the individual who kills Ali ibn Abi Talib, فَسَارَ إِلَى الْكُوفَةِ فَدَخَلَهَا وَكَتَمَ أَمْرَهُ حَتَّى أَنْ أَسْحَابِهِ مِنَ الْخَوَارِجِ الَّذِينَ هُمْ بِهَا Ibn Muljam, who was planning to kill Ali, he entered Kufa and he hid his affair. Meaning he kept his plans secret. Like the Khawarij, Al-Qaeda, and other than them, they keep their plan secret. When they massacre and kill innocent people, they don't announce what they're planning to do. Even from those who are similar to them. Even from those who are similar to them. So Ibn Muljam met whilst he was in Kufa, an extremely be- a beautiful woman known as Qattam. And they said she was re- extremely beautiful. And likewise, she had the same or a similar grievance as Ibn Muljam. Because her father and brother were killed in the battle of Nahrawan. So when Ibn Muljam saw her, he was amazed and overtook by her beauty. And he forgot about his mission and his plan. And he proposed to marry her. Again, wallahi, this is affirming the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-arwahu junoodun mujannada, that the souls are like a recruited army. Meaning, evil people will attract evil people. Evil people will attract evil people. And people of righteousness and piety will attract people of righteousness and piety. So when Ibn Muljam proposed to her, she said, I will not marry you until you remove my grief. I will not marry you until you remove my grief. So he inquired, what is your grief? She said, then I want the murder of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Again, they incite one another. They support one another. One ideology. That's why Umar Bakri, Abu Qatada, Al-Mas'ari, Hizb Al-Tahrir, Al-Muhajirun, they all support one another. Even though they may be from various groups. Even though some of, some of the individuals might use different proofs, they have one goal and one ideology. It's the same. So then the story continues. And 
she agreed to marry him, Ibn Muljam, if he was to assassinate Ali. And she advised Ibn Muljam, she said, choose a time when Ali is unaware, meaning he's not being cautious. Same as the Khawarij today. Same as the Khawarij today. Same as Al-Qaeda. They choose places where innocent people, women, children, people on their way to work, where they're present, tubes, the underground. Likewise, buses, aeroplanes, buildings, same methodology. Not on the battlefield. These people, they believe that you can kill innocent people. And wallahi, when you hear how they killed Ali, تستغربون, you'll be amazed. How they killed Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala an. So again, terrorism is terrorism. The terrorism of the Khawarij and the ter- terrorism of Al-Qaeda is exactly the same. There's no difference. So then Ibn Muljam again <coughs> was proceeding and coming nearer to the time where he had to assassinate Ali ibn Abi Talib. So he approached a man known as Shabib. And wallahi, this is exactly the same shubha that suicide bombers use. Those people that kill themselves and are not to be described as martyrs. Suicide bomber, firstly and foremostly, he's killing himself. Of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has prohibited. Secondly, he's oppressing others by killing innocent people. The same doubt, the same, exactly the same doubt, the Khawarij who killed Ali will use. So when Ibn Muljam went to this individual, he said to him, Halaka fi sharaf dunya wal akhirah. Do you want to obtain nobility? In this life and the hereafter. Do you want to obtain nobility in this life and the hereafter? So Shabib responded by saying, Wamadak, what are you referring to? What is this nobility or this honor that you are referring to? So Ibn Muljam he said. قَتْلُ Ali. I'm referring to the killing of Ali ibn Abi Talib. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ Look, these people, the Khawarij, like Al-Qaeda and those who are similar to them, exactly the same. Ibn Muljam said, killing Ali will give you nobility in this life and the hereafter. And in one story, it's mentioned that the woman who Ibn Muljam proposed to, she said, if you kill Ali, then you will enjoy the rest of your life with me. And if you die trying, then that which is with Allah is better. وَالْعِيَادُ billah. The same doubt. The suicide bomber tells you, go and blow up yourself and these innocent people, and you will be a martyr. Wallahi, they will have a surprise, because we know they're not a martyr. How can they be a martyr when the Prophet ﷺ said, Man qatala nafsa, whoever kills himself, then he is in the hellfire eternally, forever and ever. Whose statement do we take? So then the story continues. Again, the khawarij, they have doubts. And misconceptions that they use to convince the people, those who are ignorant. And that's another important point. That the Khawarij, they prey upon ignorant people. People who don't understand their religion. That's why you found Hizb al-Tahrir and al-Muhajirun. Where was their focus in the 90s? And, in, and, and likewise at the beginning of this year and last year and the year before last. Where was their primary focus? Who can answer? Universities. Universities. Why? Because the people in university, 
The majority of the time you would find them in a way and not really understanding the religion. Yes, they were Muslims. But they didn't have the grounding and understanding that would be needed to repel and refute the doubts of these people, even though their doubts are weak. So when people ask, why is it that we find British-born citizens blowing up themselves? Then the answer is, because you allowed Umar Bakri to preach in the university for the last 10 years. And other individuals who are like him. Yes, alhamdulillah you prevented Umar Bakri from entering this country. This is a good thing, but it's too late. Ten years too late. Because the seed has already been planted. And what will you do with the British Umar Bakri? Or the British born Abu Qatada? How will you deal with them? Because now the ideology has started to spread. Amongst ignorant imbeciles who glorify that which took place in London and that which took place in America on 9-11. So then, <clears throat> Shabibi said, responding to Ibn Muljam about when Ibn Muljam suggested the killing of Ali, he said, ka ummak. May your mother be bereaved of you. Indeed, Shabib said to him, you've come with a terrible thing. You've come with a terrible thing. How can you kill Ali? How can you kill Ali? And this individual Shabib, he found it difficult to approach and try to kill Ali because he recognized Ali was a relative of the Prophet ﷺ. He was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Ali had many fawail virtues which were known to all of the Muslims. So he said, really, I don't find myself comfortable with attempting to kill Ali. If it was only somebody else. But again, like the khawarij of today, the khawarij of the past, they will not suffice with that. They will try to convince you. Again, using emotions, not knowledge. Using emotions. That's why when people say Palestine, Iraq, and Afghanistan are the causes for that which happened in London, they're talking rubbish. Why? Because the ideology was there. It's like a fire that is burning. The flame never went out. Yes, these incidents and the innocent killing of people in, Af uh, uh, in Afghanistan the innocent Muslims there, and the innocent Muslims in Iraq, it was used as propaganda. But it wasn't the cause. Because the bombings in Saudi Arabia was way before that. It was way before 9-11, and it was way before the 7th of the 7th. So the ideology has always been burning. The ideology. But these things were used like firewood. So then the story, it continues that when this man, Shabib, was a bit apprehensive to try and kill Ali because he recognized who Ali was and the virtues that he possessed, Ibn Muljam said, reminding him about the killing of the people in Nahrawan, about the people who died in Nahrawan, meaning the Khawarij, again trying to arouse his emotions. So the end of the story is that this individual agreed. Yes, okay, let's go. Let us try and kill Ali. Let us go and try and kill Ali. So they set out for the attack. They set out for the attack. And again, summarizing in, pra in places. So Ibn Muljam and Shabib, they went to attack Ali. When did they choose to attack him? When did they choose to attack Ali? Radiallahu ta'ala an. They waited for the Fajr prayer. When Ali was calling people to the prayer, they waited until that point to attack him. So the story, it continues. 
So it said, they went and they were carrying their swords. And they were sitting, waiting for Ali to leave. فَلَمَّا خَرَجْ When Ali left, and he was waking the people from sleep, so they may go and pray Fajr, then they pounced upon him. Ali was saying, As-salatu, as-salatu. Ali was calling the people to pray. The Amir al-Mu'mineen, radiallahu ta'ala an, calling people to good. So they pounced upon him, فَثَارَ إِلَيْهِ شَبِيبِ بِالسَّيْفِ فَضَرَبَهُ فَوَقَعَ فِي الطَّاقِ فَضَرَبَهُ إِبْنُ مُلْجَمْ بِالسَّيْفِ عَلَى قَرْنِهِ The shahid is, they both tried to strike him, and Ibn Muljam hit Ali on the front of his forehead. Ibn Muljam, he hit Ali on the front of his forehead. What did Ibn Muljam say when he struck Ali? Anyone know? Huh? Anybody know? He said, لا حكم إلا لله ليس لك وليس لأصحابك He said, like the Khawarij today, Ibn Muldan when striking Ali, this noble companion, relative of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described Ali to be an individual who loved Allah and Allah loved him. He struck him on his forehead, he said, there is no judgment except for Allah. Not for you, Ali, and not for your companions. And that's what the Khawarij use to make takfir upon the Muslim rulers. The exact same doubt. So if this is not sufficient for anyone with two years to understand and recognize that the Khawarij of Al-Qaeda and the other groups today are the same as the Khawarij that killed Ali ibn Abi Talib, in terms of their ideology. In terms of their ideology. Then, so, فَسَالَ دَمُوا لِحْيَتِهِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْ Ali, the, his blood came down upon his beard, pouring upon his beard. And likewise, Ibn Muljam, as Ibn Kathir, he mentions, وَجَعَلَ يَتْلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَىٰ When striking Ali, he read a verse. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِ نَفْسَهُ And from the people you have those who sell themselves. إِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَؤُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ You have from the people those who sell themselves, seeking the pleasure of Allah, and Allah is full of kindness for His servants. Look, same Al-Qaeda of today, they believe that blowing up themselves and killing innocent people in America or in Britain, or in Saudi Arabia, or in Egypt, or in Yemen, or in, or in Palestine, or anywhere else in the world, the Khawarij of today, Al-Qaeda, and those like them, they believe that they're obtaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the, khawa- that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about them, in adraktuhum, if I was to meet them, the Khawarij, then I would have killed them with the killing of Ad, meaning destroyed them in totality, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Ad. And again, this is for the Muslim rulers. And not for anyone to take this upon and understand this text uh, the way that they desire. So then, Ali screamed out. After Ali was hit on his forehead, Nada Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, alaykum bihi, catch him, catch him. And Ibn Muljam, he fled. And wallahi, the story, it gets worse. The story get, gets worse, it doesn't get better. To see the extremism, and see the evilness, and even likewise you can say the dedication upon bid'ah innovation, and how much they were willing to sacrifice and give up for their false cause, and for the spilling of innocent blood, and blood which is inviolable. Ibn Kathir, in Bidai wa Nihaya, from the beginning to the end again, which is a book about the history of Islam from the beginning to the end, he mentions the way after they caught Ibn Maljam, how he was killed. Wallahi, this story, subhanallah al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, all of us on this earth from the evil of the Khawarij. When they caught him, 
Ibn Kathir he mentions Qila. When they caught him, when they caught Ibn Muljam, it is said that Ja'far ibn Abdullah that he ordered that he be killed. That he ordered that this individual be killed. It is said, and it was mentioned by Sheikh Salih al Sheikh that uh, Asif Abdullah ibn Ja'far, Abdullah ibn Ja'far, it is said by Salih al Sheikh that Ibn Muljam himself suggested, cut off my limbs so that I may, I may see them perish in the path of Allah. It is said that Ibn Muljam himself, when Abdullah ibn Ja'far was going to kill him, suggested, cut off my limbs, meaning my arms, my legs, so that I may see them perish in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Abdullah ibn Ja'far, he cut off the two hands, cut off the two hands of Ibn Muljam, and likewise his two feet, and pulled out his eyes. And Abdullah ibn Ja'far, he cut off the two hands, the two legs, and he pulled out the two eyes of Ibn Muljam. And when all of this was taking place, Ibn Muljam was reading the surah, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who has created you. To the end of the surah. Ikhwa, isn't this hulu? Who could tolerate that pain? And at the same time, when your arms are being cut off and your feet are being cut off, he's reciting, read in the name of your Lord who created you. Read in the name of your Lord who created you. So when... ثم جاءوا ليقطعوا لسانه فجزع. When they came to cut off his tongue, they came to cut off his tongue. Now he started becoming uncomfortable and scared. So most probably the question is coming to all of us: Why would he be scared? He already his legs have been cut off, his hands have been cut off. Why is he scared about his tongue? That seems simple. That should be easier than that which has taken place. Ibn Muljam, he said, قَالَ إِنِّي أَخْشَى أَن تَمُرْ عَلَيَّ سَاعَةٌ وَلَا أَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِيهَا وَالْحِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ He said, I fear that an hour will pass me by and I will not be able to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how deep these people are. That's why a person shouldn't be fooled by the length of somebody's beard or how much he prays. Or how much he fasts. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us the Khawarij will be people of worship, ibadah. He said to the companions, you will look down and you will belittle your prayer compared to their prayer. Your recitation compared to their recitation. You will belittle your fasting compared to their fasting. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ said that they will recite the Qur'an but it will not pass their throats. Meaning Ibn Muljam here. Reciting the Qur'an, but they did not understand the Qur'an it was in the way or in the manner it was meant to be understood. Ibn Muljam, here was reciting the Qur'an. But if he understood the Qur'an, in the manner that the Qur'an was meant to be understood, he would have never have laid or made one footstep in the direction of killing Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. ثُمَّ قَتَعُوا لِسَانَهُ then it's mentioned that they cut off his tongue. That they cut off the tongue of Ibn Muljam. And again, it doesn't stop there. We could go on to give the, the story of what took place with Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. But inshallah ta'ala will suffice with that. But there's one more point. How Al-Qa'id and the Khawarij of today imitate and resemble the Khawarij of the past. Ibn Muljam, you would think, anyone who has heard the story, now they would think, that surely, everyone who came after Ibn Muljam, would criticize him, and would reject the act, and not be pleased with it, and not be happy with it, 
and not rejoice in it and not condone it. That's what you would assume. But la, that's not the case. The khawarij, it's mentioned, وَقَدْ اِمْتَدَحَ ibn Muljam بَعْدَ الْخَوَارِجَ الْمُتَأَخِرِينَ فِي زَمَنِ التَّابِعِينَ Some of the khawarij, some of the khawarij, they praised Ibn Muljam in the time of the tabi'een, meaning those who came after the companions, the successors to the disciples of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَهُوَ Imran ibn Hittan. The individual known as Imran ibn Hittan. And this man, it was known at one point that he was upon the sunnah, meaning he was from Ahlul Sunnah. What happened to him? He married a Kharijiya, a woman who had the belief of the Khawarij, and she influenced him and convinced him, and he ended up believing and drinking from the same fountain as they drank from. So, if, if, uh, so this individual, Imran ibn Hittan, he mentioned some lines of poetry praising Ibn Muljam and likewise praising the death and the killing of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Like the Ra'is, one of the Ru'asa, the leaders and the elders of the Khawarij in our time, Usam ibn Ladin, praised the bombings in Saudi Arabia, praised the bombings in uh, on 9-11 that took place in America and likewise Ayman of Wawahiri who is deemed to be the number two of Al-Qaeda but it really it is said that he was the one who influenced Bin Laden when they were in Afghanistan together he was praising the attacks that took place in London again the same methodology the same ideology different times different names different times different names somebody might say well why, the, why don't they call themselves the Khawarij? Well, the answer is obvious. The answer is obvious. People change names to beautify falsehood or to try and change the reality. So nobody would, no, no one from Ahlul Bid'ah would say, for example, he's a Mu'attil, I'm a Mu'attil. And I am an individual who negates the names and attributes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody would come to you and say, I am a, I am a, 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 even the Shia, the Rafida, some even them they sometimes hide. And we know how far they are from the true understanding of Islam. So inshallah, ikhwah, that was the qissa that we wanted to share with you. Just highlighting some comparisons between the khawarij of the past and the khawarij of today. Al-Qaeda, Hizb al-Tahrir, Al-Muhajirun, and those other organizations or those other groups and parties who share the same ideology wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and inshallah no questions bismillah ta'ala wa jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah